What's up, guys? I hope you're having an awesome day. Happy Sunday and welcome to Sword of Shield Church Online. I'm again excited for the message in which I have here for you guys here today. And so without further ado, let's get into prayer and then we'll get rocking. So Heavenly Father, glory be to your name. Thank you for this time that we're having here together here on this Sunday evening, Lord. I just pray, Holy Spirit, help me to pray so I pray a better and more effective prayer. I pray, help me to impart wisdom, knowledge, understanding in the sermon of you and your word unto your people. You know, help me to expose and to illuminate these ungodly comforters in them that they may be moved towards repentance and to turn away from these things, but rather to turn towards you. I pray be with us here during this current time, Father, and place your word upon my tongue. Allow me to speak it out to your people here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. So today we are continuing our sermon series, Ungodly Comforters. I hope that for those of you that have been listening, it's been illuminating, even in some cases convicting for some of you, but I hope that it's been useful to you at some or in some capacity or another. But the point of the sermon series, again, the core of the sermon series is just to expose and bring to light things that we use as comforts, these ungodly comforters that we use to comfort ourselves and console ourselves that oftentimes lead us into sin and idolatry or are in and of themselves sinful. And we use these things instead of God, who is the God of all comfort, to comfort ourselves. Now, in particular, today's ungodly comforter is something that may hit very close to home for some of you. It's something that may be a part of your testimony or you know somebody that's struggling and dealing with this. And of course, it can also apply to you too. But I want to apply a bit of nuance as we talk about this too as well, because I'm going to be talking about one side of this and not the other side of this. But the ungodly comforter that we're highlighting here today is actually drugs and substances or substance abuse, amongst other things, because people do use drugs, right? In this very case of drugs and substances, I'm talking like cigarettes, weed, alcohol, e-cigs, vapes, cigars, and prescription drugs, too, as well. I'm not talking about things like crack cocaine, you know, and the heavy stuff and, and all those other things, but I'm talking about things that are, I guess, in a sense, more easily and readily available and are actually legal, <laughs> amongst other things. And opioids, too, can kind of be put on that because if you've ever been to the emergency room, Sometimes they'll give you opioids as a bit of a pain medication, but you have to be careful taking it because you can get addicted to it and it can cause you problems because opium is actually illegal and banned in certain countries because oh, although it has medical benefits, it can also cause a lot of problems. So the ungodly comforter that we're talking about here today is going to be in drugs and substances, right? And really in particular, I would say for us as Christians, the ones that I really want to highlight is just alcohol, weed, cigarettes vapes, cigars, and stuff like that, because the other things might not be as common, but I am talking about those things here too as well. So people do use substances and do use drugs to comfort themselves. That's just something that we know about amongst other things. You can see it in movie and TV show tropes. You, Some of you may have experienced it in life before. You wanted to feel something. You were feeling bad. Something bad had happened to you. You perhaps lost a loved one and gone through a breakup or you're hanging around the wrong group of people and you just want to feel something so you ended up getting into drugs and alcoholism amongst other things and drugs are just something that yes we do use to comfort ourselves instead of turning to god but just like all these other ungodly comforters that is no good and instead of using these things to comfort ourselves and to console ourselves and help to relieve us of our pain and our suffering our affliction instead we should turn to again the god of all comfort being the living god to provide these things for us and to be a comforter towards us that he says that he is to us right so I want to talk a little bit for why people use substances to, to comfort themselves, because there's a few different reasons I would say for why people use it. And the first is this is simply just to relieve stress. Right. One big reason for why people use drugs and substances to comfort themselves or one big way I should say that they use drugs and substances to comfort themselves is to relieve stress. So you're in a difficult situation. You want to alleviate some of that. You want to pull off some of that off of your life. So you're going to go and turn yourself over to drugs and substances. For chance, per chance, there's a good application of this in a sense with alcohol, because one thing I just want to let you know that alcohol is not a sinful thing. If we go throughout the scriptures, you will have a very hard time actually pegging that alcohol is genuinely sinful. But instead, you understand that drunkenness is sinful. Alcohol is not amongst other things, but even still, it can become a problem because too much of a good thing in excess can be a bad thing and become an idol. Right. But people. You know, oftentimes when they'll get home, it's just like I have a glass of wine to kind of simmer down or some people that deal heavily with anxiety, too, as well. One way that they actually go to combat anxiety and to simmer themselves down can be things like weed. People smoke weed for that. And in other cases, some people, they smoke cigarettes regularly. I know a lot of people in my life that whenever they're stressed out and whenever they need to release stress and everything, especially like in the northern states and, in, and, and depending on the country, some other countries, they actually smoke a lot of cigarettes and occasionally cigars. 
too as well. And this is something that's used to relieve stress. It makes you feel better, makes you feel good. If it's something like alcohol or weed, it's gonna loosen you up a little bit amongst other things. And this is gonna help you to deal a little bit better with some of the things that have been that you've been struggling with, that you've been suffering through. And you're just sitting there just like, you know what? I wanna chill out. I want to relieve myself. I want a little bit of comfort. I want a little bit of consolation. You know, I want to alleviate some of these things in which I'm going through. I'm going to go ahead and turn towards drugs. I'm going to maybe smoke some cigarettes, you know, smoke some a cigar and lay out on the porch amongst other things or smoke some weed too as well. And or perhaps I'm going to drink some alcohol. I'm stressed out. You know, I'm feeling some type, type of way. So I'm going to go ahead and drink some alcohol and maybe in a lot of cases too, or maybe in some cases too much alcohol, which is leading you into sin. Another reason for why people use drugs to comfort themselves too as well is that some people use it as a bit of an avoidance or an escape tactic. A form of comfort sometimes that we as human beings do. So instead of actually facing our problems and dealing with them head on, you know, to comfort ourselves, to console ourselves, we just remove ourselves from the problem in a sense, or we try to escape it or avoid it in some capacity. And so as well, like people do use drugs for these things. People will drink themselves, you know, to death by all means and drink themselves into drunkenness just to escape their pain and their sorrow. You can see that a lot as a common trope within, again, movies and TV shows, but then within life, because some of you, you may know people that are drunkards and that, you know, the reason for why they're drinking so much is because perhaps something has happened or life is difficult for them. And so they want to they kind of begin to avoid their sorrows and all these all these other things and so to comfort themselves they over drink they drink until drunkenness and so as they're do doing this you know regularly it's an avoidance it's an escape tactic in other cases you know for a chance people that smoke weed i would say they're they're pretty guilty of this one too as well where they're getting increasingly 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 high they kind of forget about their problems and to really loosen up but just not care about things for a little while amongst other other things right so it's used as an avoidance or an escape tactic in order to comfort and console yourself because you're having a problem you don't want to deal with it anymore you need some comfort you need some relaxation you need some stress relief whatever it may be you start to turn to drugs and some substances but in this very case rather than just relieving your stress you just want to be completely removed from the situation or be so high out of your mind or to be so drunk that you're in a sense escaping it or avoiding it so sometimes people they use drugs as an avoidance or an escape tactic to get away from their problems and to comfort to console them for a little bit of time because for some of us we think at least for this period of time if i'm drunk or if i'm high or whatever whatever it may be that i don't have to deal with this for this period of time and i feel just a little bit better because it's off my mind but I want to tell you that too as well is no good. And you have to get yourself out of that. And we'll really talk about why you shouldn't be using drugs and substances as a comforter in a little bit, right? And one last one I want to give you too as well is that sometimes people just use drugs and substances as a bit of a coping mechanism. You know, again, anxiety. I think it is it is known for certain people sometimes. I've known people strangely enough, although this had to do more with edibles, amongst other things where smoking things like weed gave them anxiety rather than relieving them of anxiety. But again, some people, they struggle so badly with things like anxiety, sometimes too as well, depression and a few other things, and they really need to loosen up. And so as a bit of a coping mechanism and coping mechanism, relieving stress is kind of similar things amongst other things is that they begin to turn themselves over to drugs, specifically things like weed, or in other cases, you know, they go to alcohol, you know, perhaps somebody's died in your life you've gone through a terrible breakup or life is just generally terrible and you need some way to kind of in a sense for you function a little bit you know to be able to cope and to deal with these things just need, you need that comfort and that consolation again you're going to turn yourself over to perhaps alcohols or alcohol or some form of drug amongst other things whether it be you smoking cigarettes and cigars or whether it be you drinking alcohol in excessive amounts or maybe just heavily amongst other things or if it's you smoking weed so that you can really relax and simmer down and be able to do certain things Right. So three reasons for why people sometimes use drugs to comfort themselves is to relieve stress. Right. Some people use it as well as an avoidance or an escape tactic and other people use it as a coping mechanism. 
And I just want to remind you of something of what an ungodly comforter is. And I'm going to try to remind you of what it is every single time that we go through the sermon series. But an ungodly comforter is anything that you use to provide comfort and consolation for you that leads you into sin and idolatry or and or idolatry. And in other cases, it's really anything that you use to provide comfort and comfort consolation for yourself that is sin or idolatry right so let's talk about it and really highlight why we shouldn't use substances to comfort ourselves because i know that for i would say amongst some christians there is a support for smoking weed in which i tell you that smoking weed is a sin you ought not to and we'll discuss reasons why amongst other things and alcohol like i discussed before drinking alcohol in and of itself is not sinful However, it can be problematic. Well, first and foremost, you shouldn't be using drugs or substances to comfort yourself or, you know, as a bit of this coping mechanism, the stress lever, because we're called to be sober minded and to avoid drunkenness specifically. You know, first Peter four, seven tells us this. The end of all things is near. Right. So Jesus is coming back. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober minded for prayer. Right. First Peter 5, 8 tells us, be a sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And Ephesians 5, 18 tells us this, too, as well. And do not get drunk with wine in which there is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. Right. So for one on one hand of the of the spectrum, we're called to just be sober minded. Right. And the reason for why you ought to be sober minded is so that you can think clearly and think straight when you're drunk. And when you're high, you can't think clearly or think straight. And I know some Christians, too, as well, especially when it comes to weed, they feel like they're in this higher level of intimacy with God or in a sense, it's more like maybe not a higher level of intimacy, but they feel like they're a little bit more alert. Right. And they can be in tune with God a little bit better. But I want to tell you that, for one, the scriptures never prescribe using anything right in order for you to be in a better spot with God. Right. You don't need that amongst other things. In other cases, you're not nearly in good as a spot as you potentially think. And we'll talk about that a little bit later amongst other things. But the scriptures instruct us to be sober minded and to avoid drunkenness. Right. And so whenever you're not sober minded, you're high as a kite. Right. Or, you know, you're an alcoholic, you're drinking until drunkenness regularly and you're falling into that. and You don't know what's going on. You're blacked out drunk or you're sloshed out or whatever it may be amongst other things. You are falling into sin because you're disobeying what the Bible says in regards to being sober minded. And it's well you're disobeying what the Bible says in regards to not being a drunkard. The Bible talks about this, too, as well. But drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And it's a dangerous thing. It's no good for you. Right. Because. There's a reason for why you will get in trouble with the police if you're driving under the influence, whether it be because you're driving while you're smoking weed or you're driving in other cases while while you're drinking until drunkenness. There's a reason for why we shouldn't be doing these things, because it could be dangerous because you're not in the right state of mind. You're not sober. And whenever you're not sober, you're not thinking clearly. Whenever you're not thinking clearly, you can get yourself into all types of trouble for sure. Right. So one big reason for why we shouldn't use drugs as a coping mechanism, we shouldn't use drugs and soap substances to comfort us is simply because we're called to be sober minded and to avoid drunkenness. Now, another big one, too, as well as this, is that oftentimes these drugs, drugs and alcohol and stuff like that, cigarettes, vapes, e-cigs, cigars, you know, like sometimes using prescription drugs and a variety of drugs that we've been talking about here today, weed and alcohol, these things oftentimes can become addictive and they can become idols in our lives. And we feel like for us as human beings, we cannot function without these things in our lives. Because I know people for sure, like, you know, you're a pothead. I'm sorry. It's as simple as that. And you cannot function without weed. If you can't function without weed, that means that you're addicted to it. And it's an idol in your life because there shouldn't be this great reliance on it, amongst other things. Because quite frankly, like, it's not even that beneficial for you. And it's something that you can absolutely survive without. But for some people, they're just like, if I do not smoke, If I do not line up a few blunts every single day, I'm going to go crazy, right? In other cases, some people are just like, if I do not have a drink, I'm going to go crazy. If I don't smoke a cigarette, I'm going to become crazy. If I don't vape every once in a while, I'm going to become crazy. These things are addictive and they're idols in your lives because you're relying on them too much. And now for you, if they're not a part of your life, you genuinely feel like you're missing a part of your life. It's an idol, right? And this idol has to be revealed and taken down because you can be fine without weed. You'll be perfectly, perfectly OK. And some of us, too, as well. We'd rather turn to things specifically about weed. And I'm coming against weed for a reason, because a lot of people smoke weed. And because, you know, weed is legal in a lot of places, too, as well. And just especially where I live, like people smoke weed all the time. And I just want to let you know that as Christians, no, 
right? No, you don't need it. It's not something that you need to survive. And you may be dealing with certain problems, but I want to tell you that Jesus is going to be the much better alternative than you smoking weed all the time for you to deal with these problems, amongst other things. And so they do oftentimes become addictive and they do oftentimes become idols. And then all of a sudden, when it's addictive, you know, you can't live without it anymore. And the moment that you feel like certain things like this that are not necessary for your survival, that you can't live without them anymore, it's become an idol in your life. And the idol has to be torn down because now it's a God in your life. Right. Alcohol is your God. Cigarettes are your God. Drugs are your God or cigarettes are your God. Weed is your God. Whatever it may be is your God. Right. And that's that's no good because these things oftentimes do lead us into idolatry, because for us as human beings, not only do we practice these things and we smoke and we drink and all, all these other things, but they become far too involved within our lives and they become a central focal point in our lives and that we can't function without them anymore. Right. Now, another big reason, too as well for why we shouldn't use drugs as a coping mechanism and why we shouldn't you know use drugs as an ungodly comforter that it is in substances is because it can be destructive to our bodies right if you drink too much alcohol say goodbye to your liver and as well for people that are smokers say goodbye to your teeth and your lungs right even with weed too as well like it does cause problems for your body and that's one thing that we should understand as christians you know the bible instructs us in first corinthians 6 19 to 20 or do you not notice your body is a temple of the holy spirit within you whom you have from god and that you are not your own for you have been brought for a price therefore glorify god in your body we should take care of our bodies and sometimes when we're dealing with these things with these, these drugs and these substances they do affect our bodies in bad ways it can cause us to have shortness of breath it can damage our lungs it can damage our liver Right. It can actually change our outward appearance, amongst other things, too, as well. And shorten our lifespan a little bit because these things are dangerous. Right. Especially things like cigarettes. And so they can be destructive to your body. And why would you continuously want to indulge in something that, you know, actively harms you? Right. Is it that worth it to you? Right. And does your body not particularly matter to you? Because last time I checked, we're supposed to, we were bought for a price and we're meant to glorify God with our body. If you want to glorify God with your body, take care of yourself. Abstain from things that constantly harm and destroy your body, right? Make sure to take care of your body, eat well, exercise, do all those other things, and don't abuse your body, the body that's been given to you by God. What you're supposed to use to do the work of the kingdom and to live out a life of righteousness and holiness, right? So as well, drugs and substances these things can be destructive to our bodies and they can cause problems for us yeah they can cause problems for us later down down the line line that we're not going to be particularly fond of when we have to begin to really deal with them right another big reason too as well and this is something that i think some people just don't want to admit but drugs substances hurt your pockets right it does hurt your pockets and it costs money you're wondering where all your money went it went to your weed, man, because you're buying weed all the time because you always have to be high. You're wondering where you might, your money went, but you literally smoke a pack of cigarettes a day. I know people literally that smoke a pack of cigarettes a day or have smoked a pack of cigarettes a day, even two packs of cigarettes a day. And you're wondering where all your extra money is going, is going towards this bad habit, is going towards this idol, this thing that you're addicted to, and it's siphoning your pockets. And you're just like, man, I don't have enough money to do certain things or I don't know I don't have as much money for my gas as I could have because for us as human beings oftentimes we prioritize things wrong you know or perhaps like I don't have quite enough money to be able to sustain my bills and everything because you spend all your money on drugs and alcohol and even still to, to talk about the testament of drugs and alcohol you see homeless people right people will give them money and everything and they'll instead of saving it and being wise with it sometimes they'll just spend it on drugs and alcohol right instead of actually using it towards something productive and so using these things it does hurt your it does hurt your pockets alcohol is expensive buying multiple packs of cigarettes a week is going to be expensive buying weed from your weed man however much that costs is expensive if you're doing it all the time right it hurts your pockets you're wondering why you have no money why you can't give to the church or why you can't like, you know, spend on some extra expenses or why you have nothing's in your nothing in your savings account is because you're spending your money on all these drugs and all this alcohol and all these things. Right. And as well, one last thing I want to give you to as well for why we shouldn't be using drugs and substances as this ungodly comforter is this. But it can actually open up doors to the spiritual realm and it can open you up to attacks from the devil. When you are not sober minded, when you're drunk, 
or when you're high as a kite, you know, you're high to your mind, you're drunk, you're blacked out drunk, and all, all these other things, it gives the devil plenty of room to attack you and to deal badly with you, for sure. In other cases, like things like psychedelics, right, and even certain things or certain drugs that you use, when it comes to practices of witchcraft, right, and even the practices of pagan nations and stuff like that, they do use drugs and substances to help them to gain access to the spiritual realm to perform some of their rituals and their incantations, right? And so in order to, you know, kind of get these things going, perhaps in some cases they do smoke weed. In other cases, they might take a psychedelic, which then makes them begin to hallucinate, but really in this hallucination, they're actually getting a little bit of access to the spiritual realm and seeing certain things, right? So you have to be careful with drugs and alcohol. And when you're drunk, by all means, that gives demons everything in the universe that they need to attack you. They can suggest all the bad ideas that they want to suggest. They can get you to do all types of nonsense that you wouldn't normally do because you're not sober minded. You're loosened up in such a way that you're much more susceptible to temptation in the wiles and the works of the devil. So when you're dealing with these drugs and these substances, specifically the things that begin to alter your state of mind, you are opening up doors. You can open up doors to the spiritual realm and in other cases, for some you too as well, you're opening up yourself to attacks from the devil. And as well, some you're wondering, including those of you that smoke weed, you're wondering why sometimes, especially when you get something a little bit too strong, or perhaps you're eating some edibles and some things happen, you know, you start wondering, why am I seeing stuff? And why are there certain things floating around, which I've had encounters with people that do kind of talk about this, yes, specifically with weed. Now, perhaps was it laced with a psychedelic? Maybe. But in other cases, maybe that they were so high that these things begin to happen. And so they start seeing things. They start having these experiences and so many, so many other things. But really, in these encounters, they're just dealing with demons and devils in the spiritual realm. So you ought to be careful when it comes to these substances, when it comes to substance abuse and when it comes to drugs, because it does. It can open up door to, doors to the spiritual realm, depending on what you're doing. Right. If you're having this altered state of state of mind, then that, that's where it can lead you. But as well, it's, of course, going to open you up to attacks from the devil. That's why the Bible tells us again, 1 Peter 5 eight, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So that's why Peter, he instructs us. He says, be alert and be sober minded, be of sober spirit, right? So substances, drugs, all these other things are not good for you. And you surely shouldn't be using these things as a comfort. And if you are using them as a comfort for yourself, you know, to perhaps help deal with your anxiety or deal with your depression, or to help deal with your grief, or perhaps you just need a stress relief, or perhaps you're using it as an escape mechanism, or using it for avoidance or some form of coping mechanism, I want to tell you that you need to repent. You don't need to use that for these things. And by all means, you're putting yourself in a worse off position because of what these things can do to you. But instead, you need to repent and turn to Christ because he's going to help you deal with these things. Because, again, he is the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. He'll take care of you, but you got to let these things go. So if you want to turn away from drugs and alcohol and substances and turn towards Christ, I just want to give you a few things. First and foremost, you need to recognize why you're using drugs, right? I know for a lot of people, they do use them recreationally, but oftentimes it's a little bit more than it just being recreation, right? So recognize why you're using drugs and recognize your idolatry of it if it's an idol in your life. Quite frankly, if you're just unwilling to stop it for any reason, then more than likely it's an idol in your life. So recognize these things, be aware of it, because the only way to begin to destroy idols in your life is to first recognize the fact that you have one. And then after you recognize the fact that you have an idol, then you can begin to tear it down and break it down and move on towards something a bit more productive, right? And then after that, understand that Christ can break you free of any bondage that you suffer through, including if you're now bound by drugs and alcohol and substances, right? I want to read you a variety of scriptures. Uh, Psalms 34, 17 tells us this, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. And as well, or Psalms 34, 17, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and rescues them for all their troubles. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, no temptation is overtaking you except something common to mankind. And God is faithful, so he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it, right? So I know for some of us, you might be like, 
my temptation is too strong or I'm just so used to doing this, but I wanted to let you know, again, God's not like, not God is not going to allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation that you go through, he's going to provide the way of escape also so that you may be able to endure it. And as well, if you cry out, like David says, the righteous cry out and guess what the Lord does? He hears and he rescues them from their troubles. In this very case, your trouble may be substance abuse. But also, on the other hand, hand, if you want to get out of this and you you really want to be set free from this, then you really need to cut yourself off from the source and get yourself in some accountability. Jesus gives us his instructions or these instructions when it comes to sin. Matthew 18, 8 through 9 tells us, and if your hand or your foot is causing you to sin, cut it off and throw it away from you. It is better for you to enter life maimed or without a foot than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye is causing you to sin, tear it out and throw it away from you. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fiery hell. Hell. So here Jesus, he just paints this principle, you know, gouge out your eye or cut off your hand because it's better for you to do these things for these things that lead you into the hellfire as in remove all things in your life, cut off all things that are tempting you or leading you into sin because it's better for you just to remove it from your life and for you to not have it rather than these things lead you into sin, you fall into sin, sin, you fall into temptation, right? So you should practice the same principle when it comes to substance abuse. You should. You should cut yourself off from the source. So if you got a weed, man, and you're just like, I'm tired of smoking weed. I want to glor glorify God, whatever it may be. Then you're going to have to block the boy. You have to block the man amongst other things and not go to the same places that he frequents so that you're not tempted with that. You know, in other cases, like sometimes when you're going to the store and you're going to you're going to go get stuff, stay away from the section that has the cigarettes and all the other things. Don't find yourself in a store full of alcohol or going to the alcohol section if you're an alcoholic trying not to, you know, drink alcohol and avoid certain situations where you can get access to these things. Stop going to these parties or hanging out with certain people where you know those things are going to be there. And if you are in a situation where you have to be around it, be far away from it. You know, don't even don't even look at it amongst other things, but cut yourself off from the source. And then not only that, but get yourself some accountability. Galatians 6 1 tells us, brothers and sisters, even if a person has caught any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual ought to restore such a person in the spirit of gentleness, each one looking for or to yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Right. So get yourself some accountability. Have a brother or sister of Christ around around you that checks up on you that you can also report to amongst other things <laughs> that is going to begin to hold you accountable and say, hey, you shouldn't be doing this or hey, like, have you fallen to sit this sin or fall into that sin or, you know, checking you every once in a while, you know, maybe even pulling up to your house a little bit and searching and combing your house to see if you have any, you know, s substances stash or whatever it may be. But get yourself some accountability and somebody in your life that's going to be like, you shouldn't be doing this. You know, why are you here? Why are you drinking this? Or why is this in your household? Why are you smoking this or X, Y, and Z or whatever it may, may be? And we'll take it away from you if necessary, right? Or take it away from you because it, it very well may be necessary, right? So first recognize why you're using drugs, why you're using substances and your idolatry of it. Now two, understand that Christ can break you free of any bondage that you suffer through because he can. He is Jehovah Mephalti, being the Lord our deliverer. And three, cut yourself off from the source and get some accountability. And last but not least, dive deep into Christ and seek him for what you need. Jesus says in John 4, 13 through 14 to the woman at the well, he says, Jesus answered her and said to her, or Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty, but the water I will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life, right? Anybody who eats of Christ and drinks of him will never be thirsty or hungry again. Right now, the reason for why you're going to these things is because you're desiring something. You want comfort. You want consolation. You want reprieve. And so you're instead of looking towards God to receive these things, you're looking towards these substances. Even though by now, if you're a Christian watching this, especially you already have Christ. Right. You're already a partaker of eternal life. But now you need to repent from this worldly mindset, still looking towards those things to heal you and to help you and to make you feel better. Instead, turn yourself over to the God of all comfort and begin to drink the living water that's from him and to begin to eat the bread of life that he is and partake in Christ. And as you do this, your needs will genuinely and truly be satisfied. And you'll no longer seek these other things to comfort you and to provide the things that you're looking for and the things that you need. But instead, you're going to begin to turn yourself over to Christ. Because Jesus is better than any drug. He's better than, 
any alcohol that you like to have. He's better than any drunken experience that you have. He's better than any weed you smoke, any cigarettes or e-cigs or cigars that you tasted before. He is better than all these things. Dive deep within Christ. Seek his face and seek him for what you need. Instead of turning to these things of the world and these things that harm you and da damage you and they are putting you in a compromising position. But that's everything I have for you guys here today in regards to this particular ungodly comforter being substance abuse, you know, drugs and substances. But I just hope that whoever needed to be convicted is convicted and that you are beginning to be led out of this and led into the greater things of Christ. But we're going to head over into announcements and final benediction. And I'll see you guys in a second.